The pandemic has brought renewed attention to the country's indigenous population as Native Americans have felt a disproportionate impact from the coronavirus. Nowhere has that been more dire than in the Navajo Nation, the largest reservation in the country which felt the brunt of the pandemic this spring and summer. But as we head into the fall, the Navajo are now turning their attention to the ballot box, looking to make their voices heard in the 2020 election. So our Martha Raddatz traveled to New Mexico to speak to voters in Navajo Nation, part of our month-long network-wide series, Turning Point, examining the so-called racial reckoning sweeping the nation and the efforts in bridging the divide. Here's Martha's report. When the pandemic hit the Navajo Nation this spring, it came fast and with ferocity. Then the virus came in, and it really spread like wildfire throughout the Navajo Nation. By May, this community suffered from the highest infection rate for COVID-19 per capita in the country, leaving behind devastation. We've had field team members lose family. We, I've lost family. And the loss is across 13 counties in three different states, Arizona, Utah, and New Mexico. Navajo Nation is the largest Indian reservation in America, a vast stretch of land, almost three times the size of Massachusetts. But amid this natural beauty, so much suffering caused by the pandemic, made worse by the close nature of Navajo families. Once the virus snuck in to the Navajo Nation, it took advantage of our strengths. And that is, we like to have our families in one house, multi-generations. And even before the pandemic, tribal communities showed higher rates of unemployment and food insecurity, disparities that increase vulnerabilities to the coronavirus. Right now, what's happening is this assessment of the pandemic, the lack of resources, the lack of initial response, and so many things and so many people of our passing. I mean, it's just, it's overwhelming. As of Thursday, some 530 Navajo have lost their lives to COVID-19, but the Navajo Nation has made a turnaround with no new cases reported on Tuesday, the first day with no new cases since the pandemic began. That's largely thanks to the strict mask policy and curfews laid out by the Navajo leaders. Democrat President Jonathan Nez and Republican Vice President Myron Lizer. The leadership here is uh, out there shoulder to shoulder with our warriors on the, on the front lines of this pandemic. This bipartisan political alliance may seem unusual in the rest of the country, featured on both sides of the recent conventions. We, for years, fought congressional battles with past congressmen and senators that were part of a broken system that ignored us. That is, until President Trump took office. Let's get real. There's a lot riding on this election. Joe has a major plan to invest in clean energy jobs and infrastructure. But they say it's doubled their ability to reach out amid historic need. It's about what the Navajo people are wanting in leadership. You know, has been effective. You know, he's got the keys to the White House. I don't. So a lot of times he goes out and uh, attends a lot of these national meetings while I stay home and take care of the domestic issues here. We met them at an aid distribution site in Crystal, New Mexico, a sign of the acute need still felt here. But along with food and water, President Nez and these volunteers are handing out information on voting. I know. Window Rock, Arizona native Janie Parrish is the campaign director for the Navajo County Democrats. Native voters have always stepped up, especially Navajo Nation voters. Um, I can remember stories where um, we had Democratic leaders just wait for the Navajo vote to come in because we're five hours away. But it's exciting. And I see the enthusiasm of our young people and our elders, like my mom. I mean, well, she's always been pretty gun ho about getting out the vote anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel good about this. If anything, it's motivating people more than ever. Janie and her mother, Rosie, are lifelong Democrats. I'm a Democrat woman ever since I can remember when they started uh, voting on the reservation. But as they work to register Navajo voters, they say their ability to vote is being restricted 
Members of the nation sued Arizona last week, challenging a new state law that mail-in ballots must be received by Election Day. You know, we, we need to use, uh, utilize every opportunity that we have to uh, bring change to our Navajo Nation and to enhance the quality of life here on Navajo, not only for Navajo, but for Indian country as well. Around here, mail can take five to six days routed through faraway cities before making it to the county seats. And many residents don't have a street address or mailboxes nearby. And I'm hoping that as we continue throughout this month of September, that we will also have drop boxes for ballots at these types of events. So if a person gets mailed their ballot to early vote, they can come and bring it to these types of uh, uh, non-contact uh, food and supply distributions and cast their ballots, get it out to uh, the county seats as quick as possible. Joanna Peshlakai is working to register voters too. How concerned are you, given the lack of mail service and, and the Navajo Nation about mail-in voting? I am very concerned because a lot of them are talking negative about early voting, but I encourage all the people that I talk with to vote early. Some Navajo motivated not only by the lack of federal support for Indian tribes and the pandemic's acute devastation here, but also by the racial reckoning across America. My mom and dad always would say, well, why do you think we were left out of those history books? It's not a pretty history. It's a horrible history. They instilled in me that we have a 10,000 year history plus as indigenous peoples. This four to 500 year is just a small stint in that. And even now, these last six months is a small stint in that four to 500 year history. So we're gonna be here, resilient. For ABC News Live from Navajo Nation, I'm Martha Raditz. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.